before my stream starts. La 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 la. Hello and welcome to the stream. Today we are going to try to get in a special guest. Um, uh, Lord Fritus, who we will be talking about the RPG game with. Uh, the RPG world game that I mentioned like 300 years ago. Um, let me go ahead and ask him if he's ready. And I have, we have tested this before and you will be able to hear his voice, uh, which is, oh, oh, there we are. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello there. Awesome. Uh, and I'm, hi. Hi. I'm sure, uh, I can hear you. okay, there's a delay. <laughs> Um, you might want to turn off the stream audio because there's a four second delay on the stream audio, which looks really weird. Um, and just listen to me on Discord. Unless you can't hear me on Discord, uh, which is which bad. Oh, okay. Uh, there seems to be a delay. Let me, let me check if there's anything wrong on my end. I'm only, uh, hearing you out of Discord. Oh, good. But there seems to be a delay. I notice either you're in Europe or for some reason it's chosen Europe as our server. Well, I am in Europe, yes. Okay. Um, are you... I'm, I'm guessing you're getting a delay hearing me. I'm getting a delay hearing you. Yes, we both have a lot of delay, yes. Okay. We can either change servers. Um, I'm going to try changing to a server in the United States. Is that okay? Oh, okay, you did it. Cool. Okay, how is it now? Let's try it. Oh, you just did it, right? Um, oh, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. Okay, um, you wanna, you want me to call it, okay, you, oh shit, now it says ice checking, and it's turned yellow now. Oh, now it's jumped to US West. Huh. Oh, I heard that pretty quickly. I'm playing stuff. Okay, let me say a number and you say it back so I can see how long it takes to round trip. One, two, three. One, two, three. That was a six second round trip. Mm. Any thoughts? I could try calling you. Let's both hang up and you try to, uh, yes, try to call me, please. Hello. Hello. That was like a four or five second delay. <laughs> this is, it's the same. Yeah, it, it's it's a little bit faster now, but there's definitely a delay. It might just be all these people using Discord now that uh -huh. they're at home and have nothing better to do. <laughs> um. If you want, I could start talking about the game, uh, give a monologue, and you could ask questions in chat, or you can just interrupt me when you have a question. And Go ahead. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we know a lot of things about our... Okay, so Open... Let me... I, I never know where to start with this. Okay, so Open Street Map has a lot of information about our world on it, about our real world. Uh, where stores are, where roads are, all of this stuff, and it is available... Um, whoa. And it is available uh, with via an API that you can access. Um, so in theory, you could create an RPG that's played on the real world. 
On top of that, we have information about things like climate, uh, land use, um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff actually that we know about. Solar energy, all this stuff we know about the world from, from data sources, large, big data sources. So the general idea here is we play this game um, on the real world. So if you want to go to a restaurant in this game, you have to go to a real world restaurant. Um, if you want to grow something in this world, you have to go somewhere where that thing can grow. Or you could grow it somewhere where it doesn't grow well, but you need additional resources. So that's sort of the idea of, of how we would do, that's the general idea behind the game. So it's like a more extreme Pokemon Go. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I keep forgetting Poke. It is sort of, I guess, a more extreme Pokemon Go, except um, if I understand Pokemon Go correctly, you actually have to go to where the Pokemon are, right? Physically travel? That is like correct, yes. Oh, in this game, the travel would all be virtual. You would be a character on a map uh, going different places. Okay, fair. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much what it is. I'm going to see if I can... Um, so climate's not... The, I'll go ahead and turn on OSM here. Um, so climate is, I mean, you know, that's not that exciting. You could... This is the... You know, but we do have some fine-grained data. We have also data on, like, population density. Um, so if you want to recruit, you know, you have to go someplace where there's a lot of people. All that sort of stuff. I don't know if this actually counts as an RPG now that I think about it. It's more of a, a world-building, Minecraft kind of thing. Well, that's pretty ambitious. Okay. So what do you think? You want in? You think it's... I don't know if ambitious is a nice way of saying too difficult, or that you're interested uh, I don't leave have my bullshit to take care of okay so I didn't quite hear that you said you have your own bullshit to take care of but no it's a nice project okay right right but you're not interested in working on this yeah that's what I said okay that's cool all right, uh, if you want, you can stick around and we can talk about other stuff, or if you're busy, that's cool too. <laughs> so, your choice. Well, I, I'm out of my quarantine, so... <laughs> so you have nothing to do. I have no, nowhere better to be. <laughs> okay, well, um, do you want? is there anything specific you want to talk about that I might be interested in, or...? Well, let's expand on your stuff then. Um, oh, okay. So you you don't you don't want in on it, but do you want me to explain it more? I mean, that's fine. I'm just curious. I'm still I'm still curious about what you're doing. Okay. It's, it's like, um, I'm not into to experiment. Like, I don't want to work on experimental games, but I'm still okay. uh, interested in what's going on in your mind. Okay. Um. Like I said, the 90, I mean, there's several ways. This is more of a game idea than an actual game. Um, one thing I was thinking about is um, instead of using OpenStreetMap, we put you on sort of a blank world map where everyone and all technology has been wiped out. And then you basically just use the uh, climate and, you know, and uh, you can go to a forest to cut down trees, to get trees if you want. Uh, you can go to, uh, you know, if you want to grow seeds or whatever, um, you know, if you want to grow, if you want to grow something, you have to go to, go to where it grows, uh, all that stuff. And you could build your own roads and stuff, and you can build bridges if you want to, uh, and basically sort of recreate the world, um, to be more efficient, uh, and, you know, to, um, and it could even be some goal, like, you know, um, repopulate the world with one billion people within seven years, or some, something like that. So obviously, to rebuild the world, you need people, but people need housing. They need uh, they need food, um, and you know there's a finite amount of work a person can put in. All that all that stuff. So 
So is it multiplayer or single player? It would be multiplayer, and it would be sort of, um, it could be either, but I mean, I'm thinking of a multiplayer version where um, people sort of, like, take territory, they own territory. Um, it's unlikely that you've p played the Commodore 64 game Mule, but it would be something like that. And so people would build up little empires, um, they would have, you know, fights, scrim see, I'm not really sure if I want to do, um, if I want to do, like, P versus P stuff. Um, and that gets a little bit more complicated because you always have people who, who are going to cheat and, you know, take multiple characters for themselves and, and, you know, stuff like that. So, again, I guess I oversold it. This is more of just sort of an idea of, I like the idea of playing an adventure game that is on um, the actual world map and uses some reality of our world. I'm thinking. Um, oh, sure, yeah. I mean, uh, with the delay is going to be hard conversing. Um, yeah, if you want, you can type stuff in chat. That should be quicker. Uh, there's still a four. Well, actually, I don't know. Oh, you're right. There's still a six second delay before you hear me, but at least there won't be the six second return delay um, for me hearing you. Um, unless things are much worse than we think they are. Um, and, and the other possibility is, and I, I've considered this. Is I just really like... No, six seconds delay is about right. Okay. Um, so with chat, I would only hear... There'd be one delay while you heard me, but not the other delay going back. Actually, at this point, you might be better off listening to the stream, because the stream delay is probably less than the Discord delay. Um, but, you know, stay on the phone just so we can... just So if we need to vocalize... True. Or if the, um, if the, if the Discord delay decreases we're in good shape. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's just that I like collecting big data. For example, I have elevation data, fairly granular elevation data. Uh, so, you know, how fast you could move would depend on the terrain that you're moving through. Climbing mountains is more difficult than walking through grasslands, that sort of thing. Um, and, and basically, I've got a lot of this sort of uh, data about the... Uh, about What's the your skill in programming? Um, I, I, I would say I have no skill in programming. I, I've written a lot of Perl scripts. I'm starting to learn JavaScript. This is something I wrote in JavaScript, so I understand. But this is very basic, obviously. Um, and so this is you know something I wrote in JavaScript where I'm trying to overlay different maps onto, um, onto the, the world. Uh, I've collected quite a bit of data, and I do have it in a form that can be used you know, I do have it online, and I do know how to use it. Uh, I do know how to access large data. Um, I'm going to write a server, and well, actually, that was the plan very recently, was to write a server uh, that would let people query this data, and then, you know, if they wanted to build, like, like very tightly zoomed-in maps. I mean, you're not going to play at this scale. Um, but you might have multiple, like, you know, one player might have, like, multiple robots or multiple characters in different parts of the world. Let me turn down the brightness here so we can see the... If you're willing to take on C++, uh, take on C++ or, well, th there's um, a plugin in Unreal Engine 4 that uh, allows you to... Um, allows you to integrate uh, real-world map data into your game. Oh, I didn't know that. So that's, this is a done kind of thing then. Oh, I keep forgetting there's a delay. Um, so someone's already done this. Not exactly. The, it's, a, it's a plugin. You can do whatever you want with it. But one of the things you can do with it is to import real-world data. It is true. Okay. Um, I guess one thing I'm, I've sort of have, I'm I don't I've always hated JavaScript since it came out, and I re I remember when it came out. I'm old, so I do remember that. Um, but I'm trying to learn more JavaScript because it's it's like you everyone can run it in their browser. It doesn't have to be compiled per platform. 
So I think of it as being like a more generic kind of thing to program. So JavaScript front end, you know, some sort of server. I would do Perl because I know Perl pretty well uh, back end. So that, that's how I would do it. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, I've posted a link to the assets in the Unreal Asset Store on okay. the chat. Uh, data. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. Wow. Streets, buildings, everything. So this is, you could play a game on the real world using this. Even moon, weather, stars, damn. Time zones. Exactly. Damn. Well, I did not know this existed. So is this for people playing games that are going outside and looking at the real world, or people sitting at a computer and just virtually traveling the real world, or both? Reading the description, uh, it's any kind of real world data, so you can use GPS location, but you can, I think, also use uh, virtual location. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Mm. Well, this is disappointing because this is doing exactly what I wanted to do. And it's free. And it's free. Well, mine would have been free too, but yeah. Um, okay. And actually, I'm wondering if we can pull this to... I mean... Well, you still can add a layer of gameplay onto it. But, I mean, that's kind of what it's intended for, right? Someone must have already used this plugin and created games with it. The part they're doing is the part I've done. So, let's see. Windows 64 and 32-bit. iOS... So I'm, I'm wondering if they have an API which I could query, but I mean that's exactly the same as querying OpenStreetMaps uh, API. Oh, they do have an API. Oh, sorry. AR, Blueprints. Um, damn. Okay, looking, looking, looking. Right, it's to use an Unreal Engine. Um, I was just wondering if they may have an API outside of that uh, for anyone to use. Um, but I mean, there are APIs that provide all of this data separately. Um, so I guess I guess they don't have an API. They just say if you're using Unreal, it's a plugin. Uh, they're not going to let people use it outside of that plugin. So this is pretty damn cool. Um, yeah, and I was looking at Unity earlier, and Unity. Um, does allow you to have maps that are rendered as people move around. In other words, you don't have to render the whole map right away. You can render it as as your players move around, which I think is how Minecraft works as well. Minecraft does not render the whole world. It renders a portion of the world, and it has a seed that is deterministically, the seed d decides how the rest of the world gets rendered once you enter that part of the world. So, kind of bummed out. Um, so this would be cool if you made a game like this, but I mean, um, let me exit full screen there. Yeah, yeah, thank you for being sorry for bumming me. No, this is good, this is good. I, I mean, I, I figured someone would be doing this eventually anyway. Um, I just didn't know someone had already done it. Um... And of course, this is Unreal Engine, and it is not available to everybody. It's not available to Linux users, uh, unless I'm misunderstanding these um, these little icons here. Uh, it is not available to, um, I guess, Mac OS, but I don't know how many people really use that. Um, so, the, and the, there does, it doesn't appear to be JavaScript, obviously. Uh, although I don't know if you could use this to create a JavaScript game. I know, uh, I know um, Unity lets you write the game um, 
in different uh, and then release it in different uh, ways like Windows or Android or even JavaScript, I think. Okay. Um, so, bummer. Now I've got to go do some. I do have other projects, but I mean, I'm crushed. Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty good. And this is pretty good. Okay. All right. I am going to recover now. Some other stuff I'm doing. Well, quite a bit of other stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I am trying to compute when um, uh, asteroids occult stars, but I've done that already. Um, I was going to try to do it for a comet, but we don't know the radius of various comets, but we can, we can fake, we can estimate if we wanted to do that. But I'm kind of bummed out. Um, oh yeah, one thing I was working on yesterday, uh, well, yesterday being whenever I last streamed, was where the Terminator falls on a, a given planet. Um, the Terminator being the line where the, uh, the sun is setting or rising. Uh, for Earth, a lot of people compute it. For um, different planets, I don't know how many people uh, are computing that. Um, so in that, let me just go to the questions. I'm, I'm so depressed. Um, all right. So let me, um, let me. Oh wow. Why am I not? I should be logged in. God damn it. I'm honestly super sorry. To no, it's come it's out of it's it's cool. Uh, there's other stuff. I mean, god damn it. Come on. I had my password saved. I don't even remember which of these is correct. I think it's this one. Um. Uh, let's see. Oh, good. I don't have it written down anywhere either. That, that's all. I'm on a different machine, so you can't see what I'm doing. Because obviously I don't want to give away my password. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. It's still the old one that I need to change, but I can't figure out how to change it. Save it, but I need to change it. Um... Okay, so we will try to go back to um, whatever the hell I was interested in. And there are several questions I'm looking at, actually. Uh, let's take a look at my network profile, and then my favorites, and then order by recent, I think. That's probably close enough. Um... Okay, so this guy was just wondering how accurate of a uh, ephemeris you need to compute solar eclipses, um, but I already gave him some advice. Write ascension to zodiac house. I guess I'll do a little brief session on that, um, just because I get to use Stellarium, which any excuse to use Stellarium. Uh, let's see if I can find my. There's my X term. Uh, let's see where am I? Yeah. And because I remount the directory every time, it's uh, kind of weird. Okay, so the question that was asked is, uh, what are the right ascensions that um, freeze my machine? No, we're fine. Um, the right ascensions that correspond to different constellations in an astrological sense, not in an astronomical sense. So we can get that information by, um, let's see here, by doing many things. One is we're going to get rid of the constellation boundaries. The other is, I think this is, I already have it up in ecliptical grid, uh, and I, uh, sorry, an equatorial grid, and I'm ignoring Pomodoro this time. So there. Um, markings, equatorial grid, Ecliptic grid, celestial. Can I get rid of the celestial sphere? Oh, shiny. Oh, I guess I have to click this to get the other ones. Okay, so this is, uh, you can see they're tilted with respect to each other. Let me make sure I'm in the correct mode here. I am in, f yeah, I'm in fixed mode, which is what we want. So let's first, why is one of them so faint? Come on.
so as this one, as you might, well, although we're very close to the uh, equinox, but uh, this line here that says zero degrees, this is the ecliptic. And every time it increases 30 degrees, we're in a different astrological constellation. Uh, so for here, from three, 30 degrees to zero, well, 345, 360 degrees, which is zero degrees, we're in the astrological constellation Pisces or the 12th house. Um, and the right ascension boundaries, uh, well, we can actually get them by just going here, can we? Um, this is a very small star, but um, the right ascension goes from 22 hours up over here to, um, this actually I think is the equinox, so this is, this is actually going to be zero, zero hours. But the problem is that only works if you have an ecliptic, by the way, are you still on the phone or have I, no, we're st you're still there, cool, sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, um, I'm still here. Okay, cool, I just wanted to make sure. Um, Okay, so, but the problem here is that only applies to the sun, which remains on the ecliptic. You'll notice Mercury is a little bit off the ecliptic, and if you look, we look a little bit deeper, um, you'll see other planets are not exactly on the ecliptic, and the moon can vary from the ecliptic quite a bit, if I can find it. It's a first quarter moon today, so we should, should be able to, okay, well, and of course it happens to be very close to the ecliptic today, um, but it can vary up to five degrees away. So the problem here you'll see is, um, while the right ascension boundaries for the pure ecliptic, um, going from here to, to here, that, uh, are, can be defined by the right ascensions that would cross this line and will cross the zero hour which crosses this line. But if you're up here, you'll notice the right ascension that crosses is a little bit different, so a little bit to the east here. And if, it's cross, if you're over here, for example, above the ecliptic, um, Again, the right ascension that, that, that crosses this line is different than the right ascension that actually crosses the, uh, the ecliptic. Um, I think I've probably made this more confusing for people that I was trying to help, but the, uh, the general idea is um, the ecliptic and the equator. God damn it, I'm going to find out a way to make this bit. Oh, well, let, me, let me do an update, but I mean, that's not going to help. Oh, I can change the color. Cool. That's what I should have done. Uh, let's make this bright red. And let's make this that feels cool. That's my what? There we go. That's useful. That is very useful. Okay, now it looks insanely bright. But let's go ahead and... Um, um, can, can I, I don't know if I can tilt this view. Um... But okay, so let's now talk about a different constant. So 300 degrees on the ecliptic. This is the ecliptic. Um, I'm pretty sure that I did yellow for the ecliptic, right? God damn it. Yes, okay, this is the ecliptic. So from 300 to 330 degrees, anything that's between this line and this line, not this line over here. I wonder if I can change the spacing of the ecliptical grid. Uh, so it's 30 degrees instead of 15 degrees. So right now, the uh, 300 to 330 is the 11th house. Uh, which is Aquarius. Um, but you'll notice that the, so the right ascension crosses at an angle. So if you're right on the ecliptic, you can measure this right ascension right here. Sorry. This right ascension right here, which would be parallel to this red line crossing here. And over here, you could look at this right ascension crossing like that, parallel to the red line. But if you're off the ecliptic, if you're a little bit north or south of the ecliptic, like if you're over here, you'll notice that as you go further to the north of the ecliptic, the right ascension line that cuts it uh, becomes, more, becomes more westerly. And the, the sort of hideous problem you're going to face if you really try to do this is if you're near the ecliptic pole. Um, now, the planets will never be close to the ecliptic pole uh, because they're all you know, pretty much on uh, close to the ecliptic, at least. But comets and asteroids can be very far from the ecliptic. Uh, so if you're at the ecliptic pole, you basically, you can wander around like this and change all 12 houses within a very small, you know, within a very small change in declination or right ascension. So the boundaries are not, not well defined here because they all merge at a point. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, and of course, here's the, uh, the, uh, the celestial pole um, where you have that problem again because if this, you know, um, 
here, what, what are you going to call this right ascension? Well, it's, all, it's like when longitudes go away at the North Pole, this is all right ascensions, so you, you really can't define that here. I mean, it happens to be um, between 90 and 60, so it's, that would be the second house that's Taurus. I th well, hang on, no. 0 to 30 is Aries, 30 to 60 is Taurus, 60 to 90 is Gemini. So this would be the astrological house Gemini between this line and this line here. Um, but the problem is the right ascension, there's no right ascension. Every right ascension, if you're at the North Pole, is inside of Gemini. So that is what I was hoping to um, send out as, a, uh, as an answer to your question. By I'll put, make a note to do that, but I don't think I'm actually going to do it. Um, uh, as a video clip uh, to your answer. But actually, I'm not really super happy with that. So, uh, so I'll probably post it, but I will feel bad about it. So anyway, um, this was an interesting question you, someone asked about um, the solar parallax, which is to say the sun appears in slightly different positions depending where you are on Earth because there's an angle between uh, you know the North Pole, the North Pole to the equator to the sun. There's an angle, but it's very very small. And um, and I think someone actually beat this to death and pointed out that the difference is so small, uh, it's you it it's not even worth measuring. Um, okay, let's see. Now this is a question. Well, that's actually the qu that's actually the hard question. Um, oh, what the hell! I guess someone did some work on this. Um, this was not a question I wanted to look at, but this guy basically wants to know what does the sky look like on different planets based on, and he said he's predicting this based on the temperature of the the star uh, that is uh, that is the uh, you know the primary star. So this doesn't have to be the sun uh, and the pressure, and he he believes that this is what would happen. Uh, I have no idea. I also have no idea why the hell I bothered to put this on my list. Okay, that's weird. Um, I was actually looking for the questions I'm following, not the questions I, um, following is a new, um, stack exchange thing, uh, that you can do, but apparently you cannot, you can follow questions, but apparently you can't get a list of questions you've followed. That's, that's not very useful, uh, unless I'm missing something. Uh, if you have any advice, if you know anything about the uh, new follow feature of Stack Exchange, let me know. So I'll show you that I followed some questions, uh, like this one I followed for sure. Oh, I'm not privy to this function. Okay, so this basically says I'm following this question, but I don't really... That means that whenever something happens, I will get an alert, but I guess I can't see a list of my... of my... Um, the questions that I follow. So, uh, okay. so. I actually did have promised on this stream to waste your time, so you really can't blame me. Um, I'll put a triple question mark by this. Um, also, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It actually says in the panel under the panel description. Um, if anyone has some idea, I'm trying to download some genetic data now because for the next two months, Comcast uh, is not limiting how much data you can use. You don't have to pay extra if you use more data. So obviously, I want to abuse that. Uh, right now, I'm trying to download some genetic data. Uh, to see the gene, gene sequences of life on Earth. I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do with it, but, you know, if you can abuse something, you should do that. Um, and one of the, okay, and one of the things I was going to say is to answer this question here about the Mars Terminator. Um, where did it go? Now, I found an answer to this. Oh, come on, where the hell is it? Okay. Okay, I'm finding it hard to believe someone actually erased this question because that would make me very sad. I could have. Well, okay, maybe it's gone now. The. Let me look at my favorites again, just for. For this this. Um. um Someone actually freaking 
Yeah. Yep, it appears that that question has been deleted. Oh, actually, hang on. I don't mean to do that. Let's see. Mars Terminator. So I worked it out for this guy. Yay. It's gone. Oh, unless it was in space. Hang on, it might have been in space. Um, take a look there real quick. Um... There we are. Okay, so this guy just wants to know where the Mars Terminator is at a given point in time. Um, go ahead, do you have something to say? Please. My viewers are so... I have no viewers, but if I did, they would be very bored. <laughs> Thank you. That's helpful. Let me see who is in chat. I, I don't think there's anyone, though. Um... Some guy named Feet. Oh, hello, Milkister Moo. I didn't... So you come in. Nice to see you. Um, I don't know who Feet is. If you want to see pictures of Feet, let me... Uh, you know what? I mean, I'm, this probably shouldn't be doing this. This is actually might be very bad. Um, there you go. That's Google Images Feet. I don't know why the hell people do that. Um, anyway. Um, so what I was going to do is I, I've, I've actually solved this problem uh, for any a planet in any time. Um, for any planet in any time. Um, but the, the problem is, uh, you know, I, like I said, I wrote the program, I can run it. That doesn't help anybody else. So the question is, could I write an API where people could access this? Because I did put it on a, on my digital ocean machine that is publicly accessible, uh, and let other people access this. So if they wanted to know any time, uh, where the terminator of any planet was, or anything that Spice knows how to, to do, um, and I decided that was actually a pretty good idea because it's easy, it can be extended, uh, we can really fuck it over, and it's pretty much useless. So those are the criteria I used to decide whether or not to do something. Um, but I somehow got bored with that. Um, and the other project, oh, let me just talk about this project because I kind of like it, uh, even though it's stupid, like all my projects. Um, this is... Um, uh, loading time taking forever. This is a uh, a wiki about pearls before swine, the um, the cartoon written by Stephen Pastis. Uh, and the cool thing about it is that it actually all comes from a single file, even though there's a lot of pages on it. There's uh, thousands of pages on it, but they're all ultimately generated from this one file, and and a Perl script that kind of figures out how to take this one file and create multiple pages from it. Um, and it's a, it's a semantic wiki in the sense that it measures relationships between things. So, for example, assuming this works, if we go to Pig, who is a character in this uh, in this um, in uh, Pearls Before Swine, um, you'll see when his first appearance was, how many times he's appeared, what he's done as a living, what his aliases are. For some reason, it should be showing that his friend is Rat, but it doesn't. And then a list of his appearances about 20 of them at a time, because obviously we don't want to show all 2,000 of them at one given time. Um, I was hoping to find a better way of doing this um, than the way I'm doing it now, which is through some really ugly Perl scripts uh, and a lot of special cases and stuff. I was trying to generalize how to create a semantic wiki uh, and maybe even one, because this is read-only. I mean, if you change it, the changes will get reverted by, by the file that I have. Um, so how to create a uh, sort of a read-only wiki um, idea, and then if it's read-only, if it's just strict HTML, you could even post it on GitHub Pages or something, because there's no there's no server communication there. Uh, I have not figured out how to do that. I mean, it should be theoretically possible, um, but apparently it's it's very difficult, uh, or at least it is for me. Um, okay. So that's, that's another pretty interesting. Okay, do you have any ideas on how to do it? <laughs> not really. Okay. Um, I, I'm not a very good uh, programmer. I'm, okay. Uh, I, I'm using the Blueprint script uh, to uh, Unreal. Okay. I mean, you said you were. Not a good idea. Okay, but I mean, you actually said you were a, a graphic designer, right? When we when we met just hours ago, 
so we, you know, I, we wouldn't expect you yeah. to program. So that's that's totally cool. Uh, if you have any ideas, they'll let me know. But uh, uh, some problems I ran into was um, even though each of these pages is static, there's a lot of them because you can do s dumb things like, uh, well, let me show you. Uh, one really bad example is if you're on a semantic wiki, you can do things like this. And this doesn't, this sounds like it's a date, but it's not. What it is, is it's a single semantic relationship. Um, and it shows the, um, it shows all the properties and you'll notice this is not, this is not, does not say 2002-0111. Oh, these two Ds might have some meaning. But, but anyway, this is a list of semantic properties. Um, and, and so this has to exist for each page. The semantic wiki doesn't actually store it. It computes it in real time. But if it's going to be a fixed web page, every single page that has any sort of semantic information needs to have a page like this. So it's hideous, basically. Um, so maybe I was thinking of a stopgap solution. Maybe I could have a uh, Perl script that creates a regular everyday wiki, uh, but treats it as a semantic wiki. But that's kind of stupid, too, because you can just use the semantic media wiki extension. The biggest problem, of course, is this is currently not on my server, but on somebody else's server, who's a wonderful person. I love him to death. Uh, he hosts semantic uh, wikis for free. Um, but ultimately, I would like to move it over to something I have, I, I can have more control over. Uh, there's also previous and next pages that you'd have to create for every, uh, it, it's just ugly. Okay. Um, I did actually try to use wget to grab the entire semantic wiki. Uh, it's 2.6 gigabytes, and I'm pretty sure the data that I got is useless. You can't just really recreate that every time the wiki changes. Uh, it's, it's too much. Um, and I did look into something called Dynalon, which was a uh, static uh, wiki, but unfortunately it does not have the, the power uh, that I need. So... Oh yeah, and this was me trying to convince people that the coronavirus is not really as bad as everyone thinks it is. Uh, and I actually did an entire stream about that. Um, but uh, let's not do that right now. Okay. Um, and not this is not really as funny as I thought it would be, but uh, you know, to the, from the point of view of the coronavirus, we're kind of kidnapping its family members. And, and taking them inside of us, but but that's actually probably okay. Um, over here, this was again an old stream, I noticed there's some errors in the data N NASA has. <laughs> um, and I was going to correct that, but I decided against it. Um, uh, and there's some conspiracy. Oh, I went through all, these are not necessarily all serious things that I went through. Um, God damn it. Oh, yeah, and I have a lot of hanging questions. Like, someone asked me to find the closest stars to Beetlejuice, and I did it, but I haven't published that answer. But it's on a stream somewhere, um, which doesn't help you, because I've got a ton of streams out there. Um, all right. Jesus Christ. Somewhere here I do have a, um, a list of things I might do on. Um, uh, and another thing that I've noticed that no one seems to have... Um, People do list when planets enter uh, different astrological constellations um, because that ast astrology is interesting to some people. But there's no one out there who seems to be uh, saying when planets enter into ast astronomical constellations as defined by the International Astronomical Union. Um, so I might have actually created a page for that. And, and I was trying to get... Um, oh. Yeah, it's vaguely interesting. So... For example, oh, this is actually, sorry, these are actually um, astrological constellations. Um, and I don't, I don't know why I did this. I think originally I did this because I couldn't find a page uh, that did this. And there's some vague interest in whether a planet enters a constellation prograde or, Jesus, or retrograde. Because um, planets do have retrograde motion. Um, but again, this and the idea was to expand this so it, it you know computes so uh, when when planets enter a astronomical constellations and if I still have Stellarium up, 
Oh, and, oh man, I gotta get rid of that. That's ugly. Um, let's see. There is constellation boundaries in here somewhere, but I don't know if it's here or somewhere else. Um, might be under Star Lore. I think I can just turn it on from here, though. And the the astronomical boundaries of constellations. I can get labels in there too, I guess. And I won't bother with lines because those are unofficial. So these are the official constellations as defined by the International Astronomical Union. I mean, and th and all the zodiacal constellations exist. Are you okay? Oh, okay. No, no problem. I think that will actually help some uh, screaming. Will help people on my on enjoy the stream more. Ah, okay. Say hello to your brother. I mean, at least it was a pe point of interest there. So the astronomical constellations look nothing like the zodiacal ones. <laughs> they're, they're not even of the same width. Aquarius, uh, Pisces, where, which is where the sun is right now. They're just. They're just. I don't even know why they bothered to define them. But it, there might be some trivial interest in why, in, you know, when different planets enter the uh, the astronomically defined constellations. Although, as a totally opposite of that, I'm going to petition the IAU to say we don't really need more. Con we don't really need constellations. It was a bad idea to divide up the sky into 89 pieces. Um, no, they're not, and that's the problem. So the sun spends less time in Aries than it does in Taurus, which is a huge constellation in terms of where the ecliptic goes. Um, in fact, because I like to annoy people, let me go ahead and put the ecliptical... I just want to put the ecliptic itself, not the grid. And that color should be bright enough. Um, eh, I guess that's fine. Um, so you can see Aries here in Taurus. spends a huge amount of time in Taurus. In fact, it just... This miss is going into Orion. Um, so yeah, because these are these are the, um, the, the as defined by IAU, the constellations are not the same size. Um, now some people, I, I insulted someone for saying this earlier, and I'll insult them now on stream. Uh, we're, we're, we're pointing out that the uh, vernal equinox will eventually shift from Pisces, where it is now, to Aquarius, and that will be the the age, yes, exactly. There's the 13th constellation uh, that, uh, that you know, as defined by uh, IAU, Ophiophagus, which the, the sun does enter and other planets do enter because it is on the ecliptic. In fact, I, I think I showed in another stream, because the moon is so far away from the ecliptic, it can actually enter Orion, sext it, can, it can enter constellations that are not even one of the 13 through which the ecliptic passes. And of course, if you're going to go all the way to like asteroids and stuff, they can pretty much go anywhere because they don't have to be close to the ecliptic. They don't they, they don't seem to follow the same orbital pattern. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, there is a let me let me waste some more time because that is what the stream is about. I think I actually did a stack exchange uh, self answer there. Um, uh, let's see. And and actually, I quoted, yeah, I actually quoted, believe it or not, the old farmer, here it is, the old farmer's almanac. So, you know, that is, that is ghetto stuff there. And even they point out, and this is old, this is like 2014, but they've been p publishing this for a long time. Even they point out, in addition to the 12 constellations, uh, the moon's place can be an Auriga, Cetus, Ophiophagus, Orion, or Sextans because it is far enough away from the ecliptic that can happen. And then I asked, Venus can actually go, um, why the hell, okay, wh where did I get nine degrees from? Um, oh, the Encyclopedia Britannica defines the zodiac, a belt around the heavens extending nine degrees on either side of the ecliptic. Um, Venus, at its worst, can be 8.25 degrees from the ecliptic. So the question is, why did someone decide nine degrees is where the cutoff is? Um, um, oh, and I answered my own question. I'm so smart. Um, did I do that just to answer my own? Oh, I did. I did do that just to answer my own question. Um, so I, I don't know why they say 9 degrees. But if you, if you do 9 degrees, um, you get uh, Corvus is in there. Uh, so there's 22 total then. Crater, 
Hydra, Orion, Pegasus is in there. Scutum, the shield, and Sa so so. There aren't really twelve. There are twenty-two. So that's 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 again totally pointless because the IAU not only made up the definitions, they made them up based on a book written by a guy named Delaporte that uses the 1875 um, the grid of, it uses the procession for 1875. So that, that just sucks, basically, because now, now all these lines are no longer straight, they're tilted now, uh, which you can't really see here, but if you zoom in on them, you can see that they're no longer straight lines with the, the ecliptic, oh, with the uh, right ascension. Yeah, there is. That's good, except, and I discovered this too late, there actually is a site that does most of this for free, and it's called astro.com, if, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so they, they have this tremendous amount of garbage here, um, and for all I know, it's an astronomer who's doing this just for fun. Oh, and apparently they have some ast astrology advice for the coronavirus. Um, but basically, they tell you where the planets are, you can do extended chart. There's a lot you can do from here. Uh, a lot of scientific calculations uh, that are... <laughs> it's kind of a very sad image there. Um, okay, so again, this is... And they apparently add a, a veil of astro astrology on top of it. Uh, but yeah, they do all these calculations. Uh, there's another guy who I've mentioned before and I'll mention again, calsky.com. Um, who also does a lot of computations, and I am in Albuquerque in the United States, uh, so he does he does a tremendous amount of work here too. So th there's a lot of people who do c computations like this. Yeah, um, so it's hard to find things people haven't actually done. Um, so, and I actually think I didn't think about this before, but the planet uh, the program I used to show the Earth, which is um, X Earth. Um, it's actually now called X Planet, but I have it, I'll call it by this right name. Minus window. This will show the Terminator, this will show where the, the Terminator is. But I actually forgot, I think it'll actually show the Terminator for Mars as well. I, I mean, I didn't, it will show other, it'll definitely show other planets. Uh, but I don't remember if it'll show the Terminator, uh, for Mars. Oh, there it is, yeah, body. So I want it in a window. That's a pretty sucky looking Mars. Oh, unless we're looking at the, the can't find Mars.jpg. Oh, that's why it looks so sucky. Um, but I think if you say like lat and longitude, you can look at any part of Mars. Shit. That's not what I meant. Oh, I think they call it lawn, not lawn. Okay. So maybe they just can't... Let me see if we can render Jupiter. I know you're typing. I'm going to get to you in just a sec. Oh, hello, Natalo. Now I've got to get there because I like Natalo. Oh, wow, they do show the Terminator for Jupiter. So they don't give exact details on where it is, but they do show it. Um, okay. What you need to do is sell a book about the extra... Con I'm ashamed I could... Do it. Go for it. You write that book, dude. I'll give you... I, you can just... I'll be... You can go straight... You can, you can take the money from it. You can do whatever the hell you want with it, because these streams are, you know, these are common... Uh, I don't think I've ever said it, but I mean, you're free to use what's on these streams uh, for whatever purpose you want, although they have so little value, I can't imagine uh, that there is a purpose. Hello, Natalo, it's good to see you again. Now, this is something uh, I might be able to screw you over on, because I asked you this on your stream, but you were busy, and I didn't want to bother you too much. Um, but I was going to ask you, how do I read genetic code? Um, she does have some awesome emotes, doesn't she? Um, so, Natalie, how do you feel about, well, two things. Number one, would you like to join our Discord call? And number two, uh, if not, well, I guess it's not number two, it's an if-then. Uh, can I ask you some questions about genetic data that I've downloaded, and you can explain to me what it actually means? And somebody else was actually very helpful to me uh, in, in uh, chat yesterday. Uh, but I kind of want to get uh, get Natalie's uh, view on this as well. So we will we will wait till we have uh, scared Natalie away. And um, it turns out it's like way worse than than I thought it was. This okay? Let's see. 
Oh, what did I ask again? Um, um, number one, I'll actually type this out as I do it. Uh, do you want to join? Actually, let me ask you the question first. Um, can you help me with genetic... The weird thing is I don't even have to type return, because if you're watching the stream, you can see this. Um, coding from the... Uh, what the hell's the name of it? Is it Gens? No, it's something else. NL, the, da the database. And understand the files I downloaded. Actually, I'm downloading more now, but... And if yes, uh, can you do it voice and join our Discord call? Because that would be really awesome. I mean, that would be like... Uh, I know you've had a great voice, and I know you're an expert on um, everything, but especially genetic stuff. So uh, that if I could get you voice, I'd be so happy. That sounded kind of dirty, but I didn't mean it in that way. Oh, you know more than I do. All right. So, okay, cool. Uh, let me. Oh, we're friends well, on Discord. First, the, the question is, what did you download? What are your files uh, Good. Um, made of? Like, is it ATGC yes. uh, basis that you got? Yeah, but let me actually show you. That's a good question. That's a great question. Let's see if we can get Natalie on here um, somehow. are we, we, We're friends on um, Discord, aren't we? I think we are. Um, we must be down here after all these people who are trying to spam me with joining their server. Uh, if not, you can... Uh, I'll give you my... Um, that's mean of you, Natalie. You should be my friend. I'll give you my... Um, my uh, Discord identity. It is very... I can't cut and paste from here. Barry Carter 1894 but I will go ahead and put it here as well. Um, if you friend me, I think I can add you to this call, which would be really fun because... We have a six-second delay with Lord Fratus, um, which I don't know how to pronounce. Frite, you say? How do you pronounce it's your awesome. name? How do you pronounce it? Oh, there we are. Uh, Damn. You didn't the first time. Oh, Frite, you say. Okay, and now I've added you. Now I can add you to this call, and we can just go effing crazy with this. Add <laughs> friend no. to... Oh, that's not how I do that. Somewhere in here, there, oh, there it is. Add person to call. There's an evil laughter back there. Okay. Hello, can you hear me, Natalie? Yep. No, N Natalie. Oh. Okay, sorry. I apparently kicked myself somehow. Okay, Natalie, are you there? Oh, well. Hello. Hello, Natalie. Hello. 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 This is great. We have enough delays now in the... Uh... <laughs> Hello. Yes, we have enough delays now that everybody is hearing everybody at a different time. This is what the stream is about. Total mass confusion. Let me go ahead and move some of the files, just, just in case someone actually wants to do genetic stuff. Let me move <laughs> some, of the, some of the files I have uh, uh, over that, I'm, that I want to ask about. Give me just one second here. If I can find... And I'm on a different machine, so you can't see what I'm doing. But do you have... Headset on? I have a headset on, yes. Uh, let's see. Why do I hear myself? Yeah, it's very weird. I, I don't hear myself. I hear you guys once. Maybe you can mute your own uh, stream if you have it up on your channel. No, uh, my stream's muted. You should definitely mute my stream too. I have. The only thing I'm hearing right now is your voices and my voice. I have no stream, no music, nothing in the background. Uh, and I'm not, that's not an April Fool's joke. We although can both uh, uh, ears both twice. Jeez. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and it's fun because we have no lag between each other. Well, because you're both in freaking Europe. You're in Europe, right, Natalie? It's good that we repeat everything, so we're very clear. Um... Okay, do you guys want to do you guys want to try doing this again or cuz you guys are both in Europe and um let's see. 
According to, according to this, the call is going through U.S. South. That should help things out. That would make sense. Because uh, that's where I am. Um, let's see. So I put the, some data here. So first of all, let's go ahead and do a little bit of data sourcing and stuff. I don't remember where it comes from, but I think each of them has um, has a uh, header file that tells me. Um, so I forget. Is it Gen Bank or is it Gen Data? What the hell? That's very cute. No one can see it because I'm not. Don't have Discord up. But uh, so for yeah, those of you, I, I have Discord up in another uh, machine, so only the three of us in this conversation can hear it, see it. It's a, it's a hamster inside of a towel eating a slice of a carrot. It's very strange. Uh, if you want to put it in the chat, people can go look at it. But anyway, um, so this is the thing I'm talking Gen Bank. That's what I was looking for. So let me go ahead and go to GenBank real quickly because I don't have it up here. Um, GenBank is a database of, um, apparently everyone has to mention COVID-19 everywhere. Um, it's a database of nucleotide sequences, um, kind of. The problem is it isn't really. So there's an FTP site where you can have FTP all, lots of data Lots and lots of data, right here. Okay, so for those of you who are interested in the hamster eating in bed with a carrot, there's that link. I, lo I love that we're doing both like genetic coding and hamsters eating carrots at the same freaking time. That's what this stream is about. So something for everybody, bring the whole family. Um, let's see if we can. So, so the problem, <laughs> the pro God damn it. the problem is what I would, what I kind of want is for any given animal, uh, I believe that there is an ACTG sequence for their DNA, but some part of that sequence is wild cards because not all, like not all ants, oh sorry, not all human beings, for example, have the exact same DNA. We're not all clones of each other, uh, but we're very similar to each other. So what I assume this database would give me is the uh, DNA sequencing where human beings are identical and sort of a, like a wild card saying this is the part where humans can differ. So that is what I was, uh, that is what I was expecting. That is not what this is though. So, um, so let me, let me, I mean, you can get these files from GenBank too. The, I basically downloaded the first in every sequence. So this is the, this is the stuff I was expecting to see. Lots of ACTG stuff. Um, the problem is, what is the hell is R? Oh, is X planet? R is uh, a letter that, because sometimes you can't decide if it's an A, T, or a G. And that R could be oh. maybe A or T. Oh. And S could be either C or G. See, already you know more than I do. I'm going to oh write God, that. I hear myself. It's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If, if there's anything you think I can do, I mean, I'm not, I'm hearing everything perfectly. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to write this down on my notes. So an R can be an A or a T, which match to each other, and an S can be a, uh, um, by the way, I'm going to skip Pomodoro this time, even though uh, I know. No, I don't remember exactly. Uh, okay. But the, the general idea is R and S mean one of a base pair that would connect to each other. Um, could, me, could mean... Uh, but, but there's, a, I mean, A and T connect to each other, right? Yes. Yes. And C and G connect to each other. So you're saying but that... Sometimes uh, in the code you don't know. Right. If it's a A or a T or a C. Right. Oh, what so is? Then you can instead write, for example, another letter okay. that says, "Oh, this is either a, an A or a T." Okay. So the letters that are not A C T G represent. Uh, and there should be some kind of chart uh, showing all these. Um... Okay. So M is obviously another it's case. So annoying that I hear myself. <laughs> 
if there's if you want to if you want to redo the call that might help do you want to try that but it must be that someone has uh, not muted the stream you might be hearing yourself on my yes. own Lord Pretus. <laughs> no no uh... do you have a headset I've had the issue with uh, Barry Carter. Uh, uh, I I'm not uh, on this stream, and I've been keeping hearing you twice. And with a delay, mm. so that's fun. This is like how you would have to communicate with people on Mars, except it would be worse because there's a bigger delay. Because the light time is enough to cause a delay there. Um, even on the Moon, there was a se one second delay. Okay, so letters like M and R. Apollo missions must have been fun. I missed that, but something, something, emissions must have been fun. Um, so I'll put it on my to do list. Apple emissions. Apple emissions? Apple as in the fruit, the company? No, a, a, Apollo, the, the god oh. of the missions that go to oh. Moon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And communicating with Voyager, although that's unmanned, is, you know, that takes hours now. Although I think we finally ended up losing Voyager. Okay. Okay. So, I said earlier this was a two-bit sequence because it can have four values, but what you're actually telling me is because of unknowns, um, you can actually have up to 16 values. Uh, any combination of ACTG with some of the letters meaning unknown between we know there's a genome we know there's a base pair here we just don't know what it is but we know that it's one of these so the the problem here is this genome is um, I'll actually tell you how long this genome is um, blah 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 so this genome is 1,032 base pairs long, and they and so you know this is 1,021. This is clearly not an entire organism. I don't. I'm pretty sure there's no organism that has a base pair sequence this small. So mm -hmm. I'm. Go ahead. Hmm. Okay. So. It does say source. I, I don't know what that word means, but I assume it's like something. Right, let's find out what it is. That's just for fun, find out what the hell it is. It's like some bug or something. It's this, Let's put a picture of him up while we're talking about him. Ta-da! Oh, Jesus, that scares me. I'm actually, that's big enough to be kind of creepy. Uh, but there he is. This is oh, the guy we're talking about. Eater. He's a mosquito. He is a, and they're showing him on. I think they're showing him on human skin. God damn it! That's not very nice. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> this is the man. This is the the mosquito of the hour, as it were. Milkister hello. Hello, Milkister Moy. I did not see you there. I think you're joking. I think it's an April first, April Fool's joke. There isn't it. Not a, not not one in. I'm not going to insult you anymore because last time you got really oh. really unhappy. Hey, wait. Let's hope so. But because uh, you got you got really unhappy because I because I kind of called you out on saying something that was actually pretty funny, but wasn't funny to me because it's an issue. Um, so let's hope you don't have the virus. But if you do, eh, you can join. By the way, if you want to join. Yep. 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 That you just came in to do that. Um, if you want, you can join the discord call because it's not quite confusing enough yet. Um, we have three people, two in Europe, one me in the United States. Delays uh, for me. There. Yeah, we're getting to the point where this is going to be totally incomprehensible garbage, uh, which is good. So if you want to join us, let me know. I'll, I can I can add you in. Okay, so <laughs> again, you can't see this. The people the people who are watching this, um, but Natalie is saying we need to fix this uh, so we don't hear our own voice. I don't. I'm fine. I hear everything perfectly, but for the other people on the sh on the call, they're hearing themselves, and it's annoying. Um, okay, 
and and she invoked the name of the hamster so I have to do something because the hamster is my spirit animal um, do you want me to hang up and call you guys individually or what whatever however the hell I do this and you can type either in thank you okay my god I found a picture that I linked in the chat thank you I'm going to save this picture, and I'll also show it on the chat. So ACTG we all know about, um, and these are the other four. Um, oh, gap symbol meaning we know there's something there, but we have no idea what it is. Um, oh. So are there, there should be exactly 16 of these. Yep, there are, because that's every... I have two symbols. Like N and X for uh, gap symbol. I, I mean, what the hell is a? Okay, that doesn't make sense though. So that's just like uh, when you don't. Yeah, wait. Because if you don't know, you could use N or X. Gap is different from N or X. Anyway, uh, the hamster has a uh, the hamster, my spirit animal. Uh, so, should I hang up and call you guys individually? Are you good with that? Sometimes. Or you could leave the call and come sure. back? Or I could leave the call and come back? <laughs> I mean, there's many options here. Well, since I'm... Okay, let me go ahead and leave the call and come back. And if that doesn't work... Yeah, leave. Okay. Yeah, let's try that for... Okay, everyone leave the call. Leave. Oh, you can't hear me now. Okay, so, so now, uh, on the stream you can still hear me. Natalo and Mr. Fridas are still talking, and they're making evil plans against me. Because um, I dropped out of the call, and they didn't. And they don't have a delay with each other. Uh, so that's not cool. Uh, but let me go ahead and rejoin them. Is that any better? Okay, no, it's not any... Maybe all of us should leave the call this time. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, but I couldn't hear Lord. He was um, very quiet. <laughs> oh, I mean, I dropped out of the call, but you guys stayed in the call. I assume you were plotting against me. Yeah, you didn't say anything. Are you here? I don't know. <laughs> I think he is. I mean, he's still on the call, and I heard some... Or was that you putting something down? Yep, still have a delay. Yeah, I'm drinking tea, so it could be me. Okay. Um, is this any better, or do we need to do this again? I mean, it might never work. This is great. I think we now have like a, a longer delay that we kind of broke it even more. All right. I'm going to try to fix this, and I'm going to try to see if I'm... Am I still running X Planet? I am. That doesn't need to be running. Okay, Natalie has left the call. I'm going to leave the call. Okay. Someone else start the call. I don't, well, actually, I'm, I'm the stream guy, so I should be doing it, but... Whatever. Um. Hello, friends and Europeans. This has gotta no. work. This has gotta work. You're singing. This it is, doesn't. It doesn't appear to work. No. Are you practicing for the Eurovision Song Contest? That would have been really funny not if I... Not really, I just like to sing random things. That's not a bad idea. So... <laughs> at one point I just started talking ASMR for no reason in another stream. I could just go with... The nice thing about not having, uh, having a stream that no one watches is I can do whatever the hell I want, pretty much. 
Um. Okay. So we are looking at genetic sequences. You can do that even if people watch. Well, that's true. You can, but I mean, no one's going to complain. Uh, I mean, not 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 TOS violations, but more, you know, people are going to say your stream isn't really useful to me. Eh, well, there's no one out there for it to be useful to. Um, so we're going to look at the GenBank sequences, but the concern that I have it is ambiguous. Ambiguous? Ambiguous? Ambiguity codes. Those different right. symbols that right. represent either CG or D or whatever. Right. Some whatever combination. Sure. Some combination of them, yeah. Um, which is cool. We have those. That's good. But that's not what I. That's not the part I didn't. I actually didn't notice. I actually didn't notice those until just now. That's not the part that confuses me, though. Clearly, our good friend Mosquito Boy here. Let's bring him back. Um, clearly, our good friend here is a complex species that has more than 1,032 base pairs. So I'm trying to figure out what what exactly is being transcribed here. What portion? I assume this is only a small portion of his DNA. Yeah. And that's also mRNA, it looks like. Oh. Not even DNA. Uh, so why don't you explain what mRNA is? Well, there are uracils in there. Say again. Sorry. Um, uh, it's, uh, there's ATGC for DNA and uh, U for uh, RNA that replaces the T. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But this sequence appears to be ACTG plus a couple of other characters. So you, you tell me what this means. Anybody, is this a DNA, RNA, you know, is it uh, ABC? It be DNA if there's a T. No? But mm. it, so you have like your DNA, and then you transcribe that into mRNA. Like make a copy of it. So this is single-stranded mRNA. So it should have ACTG, not U. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and then, then it attaches U, I think. Okay. So now I'm more confused. So that you've made things worse. Um, no. So I'm sorry. I apologize. That <laughs> no, I'm wrong. Oh. It should be you in mRNA. Well, this is, I mean, you guys can download these files yourself if you want. These are all in the, uh, in the DNA bank. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to look at a portion of the file, I'm not looking at. But what I'm seeing here looks like a bunch of base pairs of, um, of DNA. And they're in some way related. Well, that's what it is. So normally... Uh, it codes for proteins, mm -hmm. so there are, uh, there are triads, if I remember my uh, high school uh, classes correctly, they are read by triads. Every triad codes for one protein. Okay, I've heard that. And there's like a uh, terminate, like if you have three somethings in a row, yeah. it's a terminate sequence. It's a stop codon. It's called codon when there's three. Base three pairs of them. Okay, cool. So yeah, my bad. base pairs make up codons. Um, but I guess the big mystery here for me is, is this the whole genetic code of, let's, let's show him again because I like him, our mosquito friend here. Or is there more to it? If there's more to it, where is it? Probably not. So here we have, let's see. Yeah. So they, they, they identify the... Um, this must be a, a gene that is mRNA. Okay. 
So this gene codes for something. Um, so this is all the stuff that I think you guys would be know something about. Um, taxon, it's a female. Ooh. Oh, that's right, the female mosquitoes are the ones that bite. Um, so what does this tell you? What does this thing that I have up on the screen now tell you? Not much. And well, that's what it tells me I don't know too. What you want to get out of this? I, okay, let let me go back one step. If, in theory, um, this mosquito's DNA is a long strand of ACTGs, um, but different members of his species will have slightly different ACTGs, is that a true statement? I mean, this, uh, it depends on what gene it is. For example, if this is a gene for uh, creating some, oh, I can't hear myself, sorry. So if this is a gene that codes for something very basic in a, like, for example, inside a cell, the function of a cell, like, for example, the, the construction of a ribosome, it should be very, very similar. We probably all also have that exact gene because we also use that. Now I can now I can hear you echo too. Um, but okay. So yeah, this I'll always hear myself echo and I hear myself. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. Now you're not echoing anymore, so I'm happy. Um, I need to put my headphones off my ears when I speak, so I don't hear myself because it's so annoying. Wow. But then I don't hear you. <laughs> Jeez. Um. I mean, you could put me on speaker, but I'm pretty sure that's going to make things worse, not better. Because then my voice will come looping back into your microphone, and I'll hear myself more than once. Yeah. And honestly, hearing myself even once is, is tragic. So this is... Did you have this problem before I joined the call? Yes. Oh, wait, did we? Lord Frietas, mm -hmm. did we have this... We had uh, the delay problem. We had the delay problem, but I'm not sure if we had the hearing yes. yourself problem. Oh, we had both. Oh, I didn't. Okay, so I've never heard anyone twice. Everything's working great for me, except for the del delay. But I guess you guys are hearing yourselves twice. Okay. I think it's because of you have maybe the sound going through your, I don't know, desktop or something, and that kind of reports up into something. I don't know. Well, I'm actually okay. looking now at my OBS. I have desktop audio muted. The you only check your settings. I, I am. Uh, I have desktop audio muted. Um, I have the only thing that's not muted is audio input capture, which is my microphone. Um. Now, let me go ahead and unmute desktop audio and let's see if that makes things worse. Okay, let's now see if it's better or worse. Hello? You could also try to have like push to talk. Um, okay, let's see. So you find a key, so you have to push down a key every time. You that's going to be difficult because I'm actually on my VM and I'm not running Discord. I'm, I'm running Discord. But this is in Discord. Yeah, and I'm running Discord on a different machine, so I'd have to switch between Windows constantly. Maybe that's the problem, or I'm not. Okay, let me. I don't think turning on desktop audio has done anything. So I'm going to turn it back off again because it's safer that way. I don't really know why. Okay, so our understanding right now is that this gene sequence is one, sorry, this base pair sequence, 
which in turn forms a bunch of codons. Um, uh, that forms, let's see, 1,032 base pairs, so 344 codons, is just one gene in this mosquito's DNA makeup. Is that correct? Yes, probably. <laughs> oh, I forgot to push down the button. Yes. Yeah, oh, you're doing push to talk now. Okay. Uh, does that help? No, it doesn't help. Okay. So get rid of it. Let's just let's just keep jiving as we're jiving. Like I said, I don't I don't really know why this is happening. Uh, I've done this before, and it hasn't happened with other people. Um, I, I really don't know. If, if this is too annoying, let me know. I, we could try to fix it. But I really do appreciate your being on the stream because I think you know more about this than I do. Um, at, to be honest, I think the mosquito knows more about this than I do. Okay. So how long would a mosquito's base pair sequence... <laughs> <laughs> how long... I love the delayed laugh. Uh, how long would a mosquito's base pair... The total base... All of the base pairs together, how long would it be? Roughly. Longer than this. Like okay. You mean the whole uh, genome of a mosquito? Yes. The whole genome of a mosquito. No! Don't leave us fritius. Fritius. I said it once correctly, now I can't do it again. Uh, you're killing me. At least stay in chat. Help me out with this stuff. Um, okay, thank you. So the question is, if this is one gene of a mos this mosquito, where's the rest of the mosquito? I mean, if I want to manufacture mosquitoes from my DNA sequencing machine, uh, I need more more than this. And this, the next thing in it is not... Hang on, is it? Is it the same guy? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, it Probably is. Probably you don't have the whole genome because it's not important. Because well, people don't want to look at it. Okay, but now we have a different one here. A same lot guy. Of the genome is just chunk and DNA that doesn't code for anything, and you want to look at the, the genes because they are the important things that actually code. Okay. So over here we have more of this guy's genetic code. Uh, bases one to six two, s I mean six two seven more of them, um, and then there's some more. Okay, so there's a lot of these sequences here um, for this guy. Uh, are each of these sequences like a single gene? I mean, where would it tell me if this is what we're looking at? Is this a single gene of a mosquito? Is it what is it exactly? I think it's a definition or something somewhere, or description. Okay. I mean, there is. I can show you where, but I don't understand that either, so that doesn't really help. Um, if you go over here, it will tell you. I think it's just this help. Nope. Uh, but there is a place where they tell you how to read this, but it... Oh, shit. Hang on. Let me go back to... Okay, over here... But it's written in, the, in a way that I think only makes sense uh, for people who already know what they're doing. Um, okay, let me see where the GenBank... That's a submissions book. We don't want to submit more DNA. GenBank. I'm going in circles. Oh, and they do ha I do have this annotated sample which I also don't understand. But this is for one animal, Baker's yeast, basically. Um, and this apparently is just one gene 
in Baker's Yeast. I think. Maybe you can take a distance course in genetics. <laughs> okay, sure. You can teach me. I am right now, pretty much. That's what I'm doing right now, pretty much. Um. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This I think someone told me what this is. This is like a. I forgot what it was. It's oh, it's yeast. It actually says right here. It's just, it's yeast. Um. But, I mean, I guess my question to both of you, uh, both people in the chat and you, Natalie, are, do you, do you, I mean, is this the data that you use, and if so, how do you read it? Or is this not the, you don't use this data? No, when I look at the, uh, my DNA that I look at, I look at a specific gene within the CO one region in the mitochondrial DNA. So you actually use like their search engine. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, when I have my sequence, uh, then I match it against the database. So you would go like to this page here and, and type in a sequence. I don't know if you could do it there, but yeah, kind of. I mean, do you have a special... Oh, blasting, you kind of blast your sequence against your oh. database. Something. I have seen the word BLAST in all capitals before. So, well, there it is. So, I mean, do you use the web page, or do you have, like, a special program that does this? Well, yeah, mitochondrial DNA uh, is DNA that is located in the mitochondria of the cell and nuclear DNA is inside of the nucleus in this absorb. So you have this like blast program, right? Yeah, so you have to have uh, the sequence in a file format that is called FASTA and then you copy that into this thing and you just blast it against their uh, server and see if it matches with something. So the thing you would type in here is not just a bunch of ACTGs. There's something else you need to put here. Is that correct? Cool. Oh, but you actually have to say sequence so it name. Looks like this, I okay. have sent in the chat. So first you have like an error, and then you have your sequence name, and then you have your. Oh, you need to put a little ticky mark in front of it. Okay, that didn't like that. Um, but yeah, that's. You have to have that in that specific format, and then the. Uh, that didn't work though. It will recognize that this is a fast. So let me try that again. So this, I guess the web search is a little bit different from what you do. Ooh. Oh. You can't do it across all organisms. You have to specify. Oh, now you're there. Right, but I was one page. Okay, yes, I got it. So I was one page too. So let me let me go back here. So on this page here, you still have to choose an organism name. You can't search across every single organism in the world. Yes, 
you can. Okay, but I can't put a name. I can't put it in here. It doesn't like that. You have On that link that I sent you. Right, right, right. Okay. And you can search for everything. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, so this is not limited. So let's see. Oh, you can upload a file. Let's just. I'm guessing the uh, the arrow is not necessary here, but let's find out. If uh, you want, I can give you a sequence uh, that I found for my fungi, and you can search for it and see if you find it. Um, let me try the one you sent me here, but yes, please do that too. Um, blast away! I was just typing in random oh. stuff, so I'm not sure if you're going to find anything. Um... Searching? Good, I'm wasting some of their time now. This is good. This is like, in addition to having all this confusion... Um, mother of God. So this is... There's a lot of people that have that, a lot of organisms that have this sequence. Okay, but give me one that actually, uh, give me one that, uh, that might be less uh, ugly. It might be because you had, uh, you might type in, we might have just typed in something that is very like common everywhere. Right. Like junk DNA that everybody has. Okay, so give me something that is um, specific. And we also type in some kind of short uh, sequence, so. Right, that's what it actually said. Um, it even warned me that it was optimizing my um, query for short sequence. So this is this is cool. Okay. Try that one. Um, did you send it in chat or in, in Discord? I don't see it. In chat, so everybody can try. <laughs> I don't see it in chat. Um Are you sure it went through? Weird. It might be too... Maybe they thought it was spam. Oh, did my Streamlabs cut it out? Um... Oh, there it is. Holy crap. That was one hell of a sequence. Okay, let me go ahead. I can't directly so go... F I send it on the... Discord. <coughs> Okay, give me one second. I can't directly copy between machines, but I can I can do some magic here. Hang on. Mm, there we go. There we go. There we go. So now I have it over here. And there it is. Cut and paste. Now, I didn't type in seek name, but I think this may be good enough. So let's blast that sucker. Um, okay. How to read this report? I, I have no idea. you have to have that little arrow and just give it a name. Well, I, I, well is this the correct... Is this the result you expected? Yes. Okay. Um, so you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's if you're using the command if you're using the uh, command line version or whatever. Do you use this website or do you use have you downloaded a program? I use this website. Oh. There's also another website called Bold that I could use. I haven't used it yet, but I created an account. Okay. So what is this, so what, I mean, apparently, this thing here, Hyla persona pora dentore macrophile, is, is, a, is a, an organism? That's the name of the, the that's the Latin uh, name of the... You cut out there, the Latin name of the organism? 
Do you mean to do that? Yes. Okay. So if I search Google, it'll tell me what this thing really is. Ugly little yes. thing. Um, okay. And so this over here, uh, not story. Uh, this is a different. Actually, I have some human DNA that I could give you a sequence from human from that particular C. Uh, yeah, do that. That would be fantastic. So, but but what this is telling me is this DNA is found in. But then I have to code. <laughs> well, just scrape some off your cheek and send it. Um. So there's quite a few animals that have this DNA in them, right? Yeah, but you can also see that uh, there's a column called per right. percentage. I right. So it's most likely to be this guy, but it could, at lower probabilities, be one of these guys. Okay. What is X? And as, you, as you can see, we didn't have a 100% match either. Right. So this is the closest we're going to get. And is it typical not to have a 100% match? Yeah, and there's also this problem because this is a fungi, and they usually uh, use a that is better for identified fungi. Uh, so this might not even be the fungi that we. Um, uh, this might not even be the right fungus. Okay, let's. This just looks interesting. Distance tree of. Wow. I'm fascinated. I don't know what the hell this means, but is this like a uh, a, a, a ta taxonomic tree? Yeah, like a, a phylogenetic tree kind of. Okay, so basically this is saying that this is where the query would fit in, um, and this is why it's similar to these things and less similar to these things, the things that are far further away from it in the tree. Yep. That's so awesome. Oh, and you can even choose different ways of doing it. Okay, and you're not going to send me some human DNA, even in ACTG form, to run on this BLAST database. I could, I could do it, but uh, it takes me some time to do it because I'm not very familiar in R, but I could do it and I could send you maybe tomorrow or something. Oh, well, okay. I, I, don't worry about it. Uh, this is interesting, though. Um, I, I'm guessing that putting in this and this won't have a difference, but I'll do it just for fun. Um, so, if I'm understanding correctly, when you actually look at DNA, it's very likely uh, that the exact sequence you want will not be found. Uh, no. Or so, it depends. So where in the which uh, which uh, part of the DNA you target? Ah. Okay, but sometimes you'll get a perfect match. Sometimes you'll just get an approximate match. So I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Yeah. Because some parts of the DNA will be exactly the same between species. For example, all uh, all humans have the same DNA in some parts, but then we have some parts that vary between individuals. Okay. So what is this diagram here telling me? tells you uh, 
where you have a match and where you don't have a match. Okay, okay. Interesting. I'm saying interesting. I have no idea what this is. I mean, I understand sort of what it's telling me, but not really. Okay, so this is actually very interesting from a mathematical point of view. Um, it searches through a lot of different sequences um, and finds the ones that are the closest matches, but not necessarily an exact match. So I'm just going to guess... No, because there are no exact match in this database. Right. So let me let me try something here. This I'm going to make a... You also a, have to think that someone has to sample the species and know exactly which species it is, and uh, then put it, sequence it, and put it into the database. Oh! Before. Right. So maybe someone haven't really done that yet for the species, so it just finds something that is similar. Okay, or it's possible that since you're only using a single um, example of the species, the, da the data we have is specific to that one, ele one member of that species, not the species as a whole. But that's uh, how you design your primers to target those areas that are not so... They, that don't vary between individuals that oh. are the same in between. Uh, I hear myself. <laughs> now I'm curious to see if you search Google for this. So Google does not actually keep a list of genetic codes with itself, which I didn't expect. Um, use precise look. No, don't do that. Um, okay, so this is this is cool. This is actually pretty sophisticated, though. Approximate matching on fairly long sequences. Now let um. So. I bet you could just like Google or I don't know, go to YouTube and just like um, search for blasting and CDI or something like that, and then you can find videos on uh, or tutorials on how really it works and how you should like read the data for the result. Well, I think the problem is most of this, what I found, assumes you. Have, ha I'm taking courses in this, but I'm not an expert. <laughs> I know, but the, I think the problem is, mo and I'm, I'm cheating, basically. The problem is most of this stuff is written for someone who understands the basics of this stuff, which I do not. I look at this as purely mathematical data. Um, okay, so what do you want to use the data for? Or why do you want to understand this particular... Well, I'm just sort of curious, but I mean, if I had a genetic sequencer, if I could build up animals, you know, I mean, build up DNA, which I would implant into a nucleus, which I would implant into a, a some sort of um, incubator, um, I want to know, like, what part, like, let's say I wanted to create a, a unique kind of dog, uh, gray wolf, uh, Canis lupus. Um, so first of all, you look at the the, um, the portions of all, that all dogs share some DNA, quite a bit of DNA, in fact. But then there's portions of DNA that differ, and I'm just wondering what happens if you like randomly start coding them, uh, what what you end up getting. Hmm. Well, that's that's the problem. Like you can't really do that because it's so. Um, when you start to mess things up, it's very like uh, complex. So you can't really like just. Sometimes when you just like replace uh, a codon, the cell itself would repair it. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now something I was going to ask you, but I might as well get off the internet. Is it? Or it depends. Like if. As we were talking about this, like uh, when you do this genetically modification uh, thing, you have to do it from uh, 
a very early stage, you can't really take some DNA and t push it into a, a dog's arm or something like that, and then it will suddenly change. You have to do it from like sperm and eggs. Right, you have to implant and a... And if something goes wrong, uh, they will just stop dividing or they will just like mutate and it will not be a functional dog or something like that. Okay. And where would you make the changes? Would you make the changes in like uh, the genes that code for the dog's fur? So you will have like albino dogs or all different patterns on the dog's fur or where do you want to change the gene? Oh, I would basically randomize everything that is not the same between all dogs. All the DNA that is specific to uh, a specific dog. But apparently I can't do that. Yeah. Okay, let me ask uh, you... I don't think so. I'll ask because you... many genes like uh, work together as well. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this. Is there a simulator... I asked someone else this, but I'll ask it on stream now. Is there a simulator that would take a strand of DNA and start building proteins from it? And, and sort of show you how the organism would develop? Uh, like, uh, like an animation of it? How it works? Well, I mean, yeah, an animation, or actually show me what the organism would look like as I grew it, as it, as it developed inside the womb or whatever. Well, yeah, there you could uh, YouTube that. It's like first you have like a sperm cell and an egg cell, and then they start to divide, and they form this kind of different shapes and start to become like uh, a little closer, and then get more and more complex. And then you have this. I think it, this is called uh, what is it? Uh, 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 where's my oh no I sold my basic oh. I, I think I think maybe I think maybe I'm asking the wrong question I have no. like a huge biology book <laughs> okay I think I think I asked the question wrong suppose I found yeah, a maybe. dog suppose I found a dog you know sucked out some of its DNA got one big long strand of DNA which is just ACTG stuck it into some program could that program show me that dog develop from a from a fertilized egg all the way up to its birth? That specific dog, based on its exact DNA code. Uh, I don't know if there's uh, even programs that do that. Okay. No, I don't think so. Okay, because that would be pretty complicated. So we do I don't know, know why you would like uh, make. Uh, Why you would want to create fictional if animals? It, there's no like specific purpose for it, or uh, I, well. Well, I mean, you could create new organisms, right, without having to actually genetically sequence them. There's a lot of job going into it, and then if you don't use it for something. Oh. No, I I, I just like knowledge for the sake of knowledge, mm. but also because I think it would be interesting, um, to have a program that showed me what a given genetic what a given DNA would give me. Um, so, you know, if I, if I tweak these, these codons, how do I change the dog that I get without actually having to breed a real live dog? I mean, there's so much uh, data within the genetic code Mm -hmm. And there's so many uh, complex. Uh, which I can hear myself. Okay, there's so many uh, genes that, just like small genes that just like uh, code for the synthesis of some uh, one amino acid, for example, and that's just like one small. Uh, gene that does like one one small part in like a huge organism and they're this so so complex so you kind of disentangle all that and kind of 
create a simulation in some computer doing all that, showing all that and exact steps. Like even if you have like one cell doing that, imagine that you have a whole body with like millions of cells doing that at the same time and doing different things at the same time. And then you should want to somehow simulate it. I think it's like impossible. <laughs> well, maybe quantum computing will help with that. You but want to see it in real time, how this dog is created? No, I want to see it faster than real time. I don't want to wait nine months or however long dogs gestate for. I want to, like, see my puppy right away. Then you want to see the results. Yeah. Then you could just see uh, the... Uh, then you could just go and see the uh, genes that actually... Uh, the, uh, transcribes into like oh, I can't uh, it's so annoying hearing myself uh, but then you can just see uh, look at the genes that actually uh, codes for the phenotype actually what you see like the fur color the eye color the uh, how long the legs are and all that stuff and then you see like oh this is how my dog looks like and then you could just like ignore all other stuff okay so here was I was just like finding this picture of uh, the first process that is happening inside a cell after a uh, cell is first fertilized. Oh, I thought I was linking a picture. That's fine. This this looks good. Well, it was the second picture. The, the one I'm looking at now? And then imagine in all these cells, they keep on dividing, but in all these cells, there's so much stuff going on at the same time. Okay. So you can't really like, but you're not interested in that. You're interested in the outcome, of course. Well, I am interested. <laughs> that's just the first stage. Well, okay. I am interested in the outcome, but I'm guessing that every possible dog in the world has not been created yet. There are some dogs that could exist in theory, but don't exist in reality. Yeah, sure. So. My question is, I couldn't There's see... There's always that. I guess right. you could just, like, crisscross everything. Right. So, but I can't see what that... I mean, we don't know everything about a dog's DNA, do we? Mm, well, we don't... Like, we don't even know any uh, much of uh, the DNA that we have because a lot of it like almost like 90% or something is just junk DNA DNA that doesn't code for anything and we have no idea what it does or if it actually does not. Okay. We just know basically the genes that are coding for stuff. We know what they do and why they are important or what the stuff they are doing. Okay. I asked someone this yesterday and they gave me an a-, a weird answer. Suppose we took our junk DNA and replaced it with just random random base pairs. Would that affect us, or do we not know whether that would affect us? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think we know how that would affect us. Okay. So we don't know for a fact that it's junk DNA. It does something. We just don't know what it is that it's doing. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, this is complicated. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I guess what bugs me... Ooh, cleavage. I just saw the word cleavage and I had to stop. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, we can do it as human beings, right? And computers are supposed to be more powerful than we are. So how come computers can't do this? Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't have... They have more processing power than we do. Or is that really not true now? Let's take a look here. Evolutionary development... Well, that's found the name for it. Uh, evolutionary developmental biology. Which 
Jesus. Here we can see which kind of genes are activated when, in uh, which part of the development of a fruit fly, for example, or for like a uh, mouse or a uh, Homo sapiens, for example. And you can see that we share all the same genes that are developed in um, fly and mouse and humans. Up to a point, right? But they're activated differently. Oh. So you see the genes that the red ones for the fly's head. We also have that, but for us, it's uh, some kind of in, in the spine. I don't know. Uh. It's so annoying here myself. Ah. Hello, <laughs> Milk Yester Moo. Welcome back. Uh, do you have a new joke for us? Uh, <laughs> do you have some other fatal disease? Or would it, would it be very, very h hilarious if it turns out that after you told the joke, you went and got tested, and you really did have it. Um, and it turns out you really do have COVID-19, and we're not going to believe you now because you <laughs> joked about it earlier. And no one's going to treat you because they all think that you were, you're just joking. The boy who cried COVID-19. Um, I'm not saying I hope that happens to you, but, but it would be funny if it did. Okay. Okay, I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to keep talking. Um, so, base pair sequences make up codons. Can you actually, given codons, can you actually get protein, I mean, could a computer get proteins out of them? Yes. So, codons are like, code i mean they're like like I ruby think, code yeah, there, there are simulation of how like a uh, uh, protein is structured and so okay so if i had some codons could i actually i mean could you write a program or whatever to parse those codons and tell me what proteins i'm getting using what the hell this was where the hell did it go Oh, come on. I would just... Okay, I got oversensitive. I apologize. So the thing is, mm -hmm. we can know how a protein looks like. What? Oh, I'm apologizing to Milk Yastramu because I... He told a joke we that was... We can know how a protein looks like and how it behaves just by looking at the code. So because for each codon, it codes for an amino acid. And then we have like this long chain of amino acids. And all these amino acids have different kind of chemical, um, uh, what do you say, chemical behaviors. Uh, so when you know the different, how these uh, amino acids behave, for example, some of them more acidic and some of them are more uh, base-like, and you can then simulate how this long chain of amino acids can fold, and then, then you can have build this whole protein structure and see how it looks like, and then you can see how this big structure of protein can behave with another structure. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Now I'm going to ask you. Let's see if I can show you this. Okay. Okay, so let me ask you this question now. So using the stream of DNA that you sent me, I could convert this into codons, right? Sorry, this stream here. I could convert this into codons, yeah, right? Yeah, but you have to know, you have to find a start codon. Oh, so I can't just say TAT is equal to something. One second, let me, let no. me, let me... Um, mm -hmm. There. So this is my list of codons and what, what are called anti-codons, I guess. So I can't just use this lookup table. TTA does not automatically go into asparagine. Uh, no, because how do you know if you should start over there? You mean start over? Um, Why could it be ATG instead? Or TGA, that is the start program. 
You have to know where to start. Oh. Oh, right, because you only gave me a piece of the genetic, uh, genetic code, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I had all of the genetic code like I presumably do here, or at least one for a... So if I have this code for a gene, can I assume that ATC is the first codon? I don't think you can assume that, no. Okay, so how do I know what where where to start? Uh, you follow a chart, I can show you. Okay, let's take a look. I have too many tabs open now. Um. And then you can see that the AUG is the start codon. A. It's U. G. Um. Or ATG in this case. A. Well, there's no T in this one though. Is is U the same thing as T in this chart? Yeah, but you replace a U with a T. Oh, got it. Okay, so here's my code, AT, yeah. ATC. So I go here, A, T, C. So that take. oh, sorry, A, T. Um, um, if you want to find a gene, the coding gene, you have to look in your code and until you find ATG. Ah, okay. So, oh, in this case, it would be MET, whatever that means. Yeah, that's an amino acid. Okay. So, in this case, oh, I'm sorry, this is ATC. Hang on. AUC, AU. So I don't see any AU, oh, here it is. So this would be the start gene for me, AUC, ATC, uh, called Li or Li or something. No, that's not your start. Oh. Like, uh, you can't assume that in this line of the uh, code that I've given, given you, that the first one is the start code. Right. But I'm looking at now the uh, the database, and this is presumably the, a whole gene. So how do I know, you know, ATC, AUC, could be a start code, right? No, there is only one start code on the ATC. Always in all genes. Oh, so that is that. It doesn't matter which gene it is. Oh, but if that's not in this chart that you showed me. And then. Did I say the wrong one? Well, I'm I'm looking at it. Well, it's A U G here because it has right. been transcribed M R. Right, but does M E T mean start, or what does that mean? Oh, this says stop. Uh, what did you say again? M-E-T? Yeah. Okay. I see here that there's something called a stop gene. Where is the start? It would be so much easier if you just, like, wash, like, a... That's the start gene. It's, uh, so if you just ignore that it says M-E-T, you right. can say that it's, it says start instead. Okay, so this is always the start gene. And there are several different stop, sorry, the start codon, and there are different stop codons. No, it's not a start gene, it's a start codon. Right, I actually corrected myself, I think. Yes. <laughs> There's three different stop codons and one start. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I know, there's a delay. 
once I, you know what, maybe I should just be typing mm -hmm. this out. Let me type this out. So I'll, t I'll say it out loud too. Uh, so do you think you can find a start code on? Um, okay, so now There's that... There's actually five start codons in that line of code. Okay, so we're looking for ATG. So not there, not there. Um, not there. <laughs> well, let me let me cheat a little bit. Oh, you're looking at that now. Okay. Yeah, I'm not looking at your code anymore. I'm looking at this now. The ATG has to fall at a multiple okay. of three, right? I mean, it can't just be anywhere. It has to be, like. Yes. So in other words, like this ATG here on this line 361, that is not a start codon. Yes, it is. Oh. No. Be well, what? Because it's not it it's not lined All up correctly. Well, it can. Uh, no, it depends on where the stop codon is. Okay. So, I guess what I'm asking... You search for stop codons as well. Okay. But I guess I'm confused. Um, do we take these things, base pairs, three at a time, or do we look for ATG anywhere, even if it's like... Like, what if the second through fourth letter was ATG? then it would start there. Oh. So then the first uh, base pair would just... Right, right. But then the first base pair would just be ignored. Yes. Oh. And the reason why we have all that is that when they have uh, amplified this... Uh, so this is... Uh, let's see. So when you amplify this in the lab, you just like amplify a chunk of a DNA, and within that chunk, you know that you have the DNA. Okay. So let's do this again. Oh, shit. So a little bit before and after will be like stuff that you don't need. Right, but in this case, I'm looking at a whole gene, but that doesn't matter. I guess the gene is within that. Oh, the gene is... Oh, I'm confused. Sorry. Um, it's very, very hard to explain, but I, I promise you that it will be so much easier just like watch, like, I don't know, 15 minutes, someone explaining it on YouTube. <laughs> okay, I guess it would be, but I mean, I can't really stream that. I want to annoy you. So, so in this case, we would ignore everything up to the first ATG here. <laughs> yes, and now you can search for the stop codons to see right. where they are. So, but after, immediately after this... We have three different stop codons. Right. But okay, but immediately after this, we do AAA, which means we actually produce an amino acid. Yes. And then GTA, because, well, Grand Theft Auto um, is not a stop, so we produce another acid. And we keep going until the we... next amino acid. Right. And we keep going until we hit a stop codon. Yes. Once we get a stop codon, we ignore everything until we see a start codon yeah. again. Yeah, but I think in this there will only be like one stop codon. Um, okay. I, I, I don't know quite how to search for multiple things yet, but let's see. UAA... Sorry, which one? Like, within your code you can have several uh, start codons. Right. But we need to find... Only one stop codon. 
like within your gene. Oh. Because if you have start codon within your gene, that doesn't matter. But if you have a start codon, it will stop. Oh, so if you have more than one start codon, it doesn't mean anything. No. It will just start to transcribe uh, from the start codon. And then if you have start codon, it will not start over again. It Got it. Like maybe that's this net. Oh! So if a start codon is found inside of a start codon, it becomes an amino acid. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Got it. So yeah. eventually I could take all of this and turn it into a list of proteins. Sorry, a list of amino acids. TAA. I thought TAA was my stop code. AA. Is that a stop codon? I thought it was. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it is a stop codon. So it's showing up a lot here. Okay, then, I, then I'm very confused now. Okay. Because, I mean, these can't all be stop codons, right? Let me see. Yeah. But they are, they are, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, you have to, now it's different uh, because you have to count from the one, the start, the first start codon that you have, you have to count in threes all the time. Because oh. these ones may not appear because Got they're it. not in this Got it. Uh, threes that are, are coming after the start codon. Right. And we don't see that now because you just search for it. So I got it's gotcha. a bit tricky to I got look it. for it here. You could do it this like in uh, computer programs that are that Right, 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 right. So this is so okay. So what you're saying here is once we ah hang on. So crap, hang on one sec. Let's just do this again. Wait, is ACG what I'm looking for? Oh, ATG, sorry. So you're saying that after this ATG, it's AAA GTA a A A A A A A T T. So it's got to be basically lined up on a on an on a multiple of three. Yes. Got it. Got it. And that's the uh, stop codon. And now you're just looking at what stop codon, and there are three possible stop codons that gotcha. you're going to look for. Gotcha. 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 Obviously, I would do this with the computer. Okay. Okay. So after I'm done with this, I could have a list of amino acids, right? Yeah. Once I have the amino acids, can I convert them to proteins? Yes. Or yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So this sequence of 1,030 whatever base pairs would code down to, roughly speaking, how many proteins? One? You think this whole thing is one protein? With one protein with several... Sorry, say that again? Yes. Okay. So you think this whole, this entire thing that's on the screen, all of these letters... One protein with amino acids. Right, right, but just one pro this whole thing is one protein. Yeah, I think so. It could be. Okay, wow. I think so because of this file. Like, why would they have, like, several proteins within one file? That would just be messy. Okay, so you think they're breaking every, every one of these little um, sections here uh, is a single protein. Yeah, could be. Okay, okay. What's an enzyme activator? It says, like there, a definition. If you read one of the definitions, okay. it says what it is. Um... Oh, enzyme activator mRNA sequence. What's an enzyme? That's what this gene does. 
Okay. Yes. What is it? What is an enzyme activator? It's probably uh, an enzyme is something that uh, um, that does something. Like, um, what do you say? How do you say it? Mm. Uh, well, an enzyme first of all is a protein, and it uh, kind of like could speed up uh, processes. And oh. this is an e activator enzyme, so it activates something. Maybe activates the mRNA sequence to do something. But uh, this is like on a very, very small scale, like in a cell, some kind of enzyme. I mean, there are thousands of different enzymes and thousands of different stuff. So, um, okay. So, someone has already written software that would. Maybe you could just uh, copy it and Google it. Um, oh, yeah, I could, huh? She's getting a little frustrated with me, I think. Find enzymes, okay. Jesus Christ, this is hard. Um, so there are people who've already written software that would convert this into a single protein. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, I think I've bothered you enough for today. For right now, at least. Um... Oh, we've been going for like two hours and 20 minutes now. Okay, I think I'm going to end the stream, um, and then I'll say, I'll say goodbye. I've had those things. What? I haven't been here for two hours. No, you, you haven't been here for two hours. The stream has been what going for... What am I doing with my life? Uh, yeah, exactly. You're spending two hours... Well, you probably spent a good chunk of time here, even if it's not the whole two hours, 22 minutes. Actually, it should tell us. It should tell us what this but is. But I learned as well. It's just, it's just nice. Cool. Well, I think I'm going to end the stream. I'm going to talk. To, I'm going to say goodbye to you in just a second after that. So thank you, everyone, for watching the stream. Uh, if you have more time to waste later, I might come back later today, or I might not. All right. Stopping stream now.